Hi everyone, I welcome you all to our Earth and Life Science 11 virtual class. I'm Evelyn and glad to have you here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So how's your day? Feeling great? Anyway, to start our lesson, let us first feel the presence of air, the warm weather, the noise in our surroundings, the smell of food, the beat of our heart, and all of you take a deep breath, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So this way, how people responded to adaptation for our survival. We need to be diverse in some aspect. Okay. Now, I would like to introduce our topic for today is all about the process of evolution. So class, in your own words, describe what you think the theory of evolution means. Let's have a quick look on this concept. So when we say evolution, it can be explained through evidence, pattern of descent. So for evidence, such as the fossils, homologous structure, and the genetic similarities. Then we also have to discuss the distribution of species, the common traits in embryo. So all of this we are going to tackle today. So for our essential question, how did naturalists develop the concept of evolution? Billion of years, Earth has become a witness to countless life forms that live in its every conceivable corner. Planet Earth has been a major factor in the emergence and disappearance of many organisms that diversify into various forms in order to survive. So for our main idea, our present understanding of evolution is based on several supporting theories and evidence. So, let's find out the different theory of evolution. So, according to Darwin's theory of evolution, organisms are competing for resources, any variation, in an organism favor survival in a particular environment. So this will increase the chances of reproducing and leaving fertile offspring. Organisms with less favorable variations are transferred to future generation and as time goes, variations within individual species increase it results to a new species. So the theory of natural selection is also referred to as survival of the fittiest. Now, we have misconception about evolution. So evolution does not tell us how life first appeared on Earth. Individuals do not evolve. Only population can evolve. So changes that happen 
to a person in their lifetime do not always get passed on to their children. Evolution is not a ladder working towards a better species. So these are some of the misconceptions about evolution. So the theory of evolution describes a mechanism for species to change over time. You know, many people think of evolution as something that takes a long period of time or something that might require millions of years. But today, with the experience in antibiotic and pest resistance, it has been discovered that bacteria and insects can go through an evolutionary fast track. It is just within weeks a population of bacteria can virtually reinvent themselves because they can reproduce quickly, generate mutation at a rapid rate, and also transfer adaptive traits among the different members of their population. So they have the ability to evolve quickly due to their adaptive characteristics that allow them to survive the killing effects of drugs, reignite infections, or infect more hot in a single cup. Okay. So again, evolution refers to the cumulative change in a population of organism over time. So class, class, this is how Charles Darwin looked like. But do you know who is Charles Darwin? Okay, so Charles Darwin was the best known for making the thought of evolution acceptable for scientists in the year 19th century. A naturalist became curious as to how different groups of organisms are unique and unchanging species. Okay? So he began to hypothesize that populations of organisms might have evolved or changed over a period of time. So even other scientists at that time also supported the idea of Charles Darwin. Even his grandfather Erasmus Darwin also supported Charles Darwin's theory about evolution. According to Charles Darwin, it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor that intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. So remember this word of Charles Darwin, that it is the one who is the most responsive organism to change that will live longer or survive. Another scientist who work independently and explain on how the mechanism of evolution might have occurred. So no other than Alfred Rosell Wallace. So on the region of species by means of natural selection. So for Alfred, natural selection as a mechanism for the changes among organisms from a common ancestor, as well as the idea of survival of the fittest. So Alfred also traveled to South America to collect plants and animal specimens. He also noticed that variation among members of the population of the organism he observed. So similar also to Darwin, Russell Wallace also devised a theory supporting his observation. 
So it was in 1858 that Wallace published several researches on the theory of evolution, which included natural selection as a mechanism for the changes among organisms from a common ancestor. Okay? Now, Darwin and Wallace believe in the existence of variation and that the driving mechanism of evolution is natural selection. Russell Wallace wrote an essay summarizing evolutionary change from his field work in Malaysia and also gave Darwin the drive to publish his findings. So they even publicate not the origin of the species. So the work of Wallace and Darwin were being publicated. The journey of Charles Darwin. So he went on a five-year journey aboard the HMS Beagle in 1831 to 1836. So that was five years to mark the coastline of South America. So his trip to the Galapagos Island near Ecuador had impressed Darwin because of its unique set of plants and animals and the variability of any single species. So he spent all his time during exploration making full sketches and observations, accumulating pieces of evidence that could shed light on the origin of species. So Darwin was really fascinated in particular by the land tortoises and marine iguanas in that Galapagos Islands. Giant, he noticed that giant tortoises varied in predictable ways from one island to another. So the shape of a tortoise shell could be used to identify which island a particular tortoise inhabited. Okay. Now, during his journey to home, so Darwin observed that characteristics of many plants and animals vary greatly among the islands. So, <clears throat> from one, one island to another island, Darwin observed the characteristics of many plants that they vary. No? So, therefore, he hypothesized, his hypothesis goes like this. Separate species may have arose from an original ancestor. Okay. So, now we will have to discuss the natural selection. So, natural selection, over time, natural selection results in changes in inherited characteristics of a population. So these changes increase a species fitness in its environment. Now, class, I want you to look at this picture and try to observe the figure which is the population of mice in different areas. So it is labeled A, B, and C. Okay. Now, I want you to identify and understand the evolution by natural selection. So identify characteristic of a mice that shows adaptation. So, you have to describe what is happening in the figure A to Z. So, try to look at the population of mice in the different areas. So, you have here A, B, and C. 
see. So class, describe what is happening in the figure A to C. Then, is the population of mice different in figure C than in figure B? Okay, so try to note and to notice and also try to explain why. And of course, what characteristic of the mice shows adaptation? So I hope it is clear. Okay? So you have to answer this in your activity. Okay. How about this? The process in nature by which organism better adapted to their environment tend to survive and reproduce more than those less adapted to their environment is what you call again the natural selection. So one example is when the wild frog so class try to look at this picture. You have the green one and the brown one which which color is almost close to the color of the wood. Okay? Now one example is when the wild frogs eaten by snakes and birds. So, gray wild frogs blend well in dark wooded areas on tree bark. And the green wild frogs blend well with the green vegetation, right? So, if this wild frog, the, the green wild frog, will also blend in the green vegetation. And this gray or the brown wild frogs will also blend their color when they are in the wood area. Okay. The green wild frog on the bark of a tree is easier for a predator to find compared to a green wild frog on a green leaf. So in other words, this green wild frog is easy to find for the predator once they are in the uh, wood area or in this tree bark. Okay? So the green wild frogs that go into habitats where they are not camouflaged are more likely to be eaten by predators. So therefore, you must have to stay where you are supposed to be. So natural selection has favored wild frogs that live in habitat. Okay? So in other words, organisms that do not belong in that particular habitat must be prone to be eaten by the predator. So, in which they are more camouflaged since wild frogs that have been eaten do not live to have any more baby wild frogs. So, this explains the distribution of gray and the green wild frogs. So, the wooded habitat of a gray wild frog is larger and extend further while the green wild frog swamp and marsh habitat are concentrated in the south. So in the area in which gray, gray green and gray wild frogs overlap, both habitats occur but in different places. Okay? So class, in general, natural selection is a process that results in some plants and animals with certain characteristics being better adjusted than the others to their natural environment. Okay? So we also have here another example. So we have the peppered moth. 
so the peppered moth is an example of natural selection so <clears throat> During the Industrial Revolution, the trees on which the moth rested became covered. So this selected against the allele for pale, the color in the population which were poorly camouflaged from predators and selected for the dark color of allele. So somehow this also explains just like with the green and the gray wild frogs. Okay, so they should live poor the habitat is if not then they can be easily eaten by predators so the struggle for existence members of each species had to compete for food shelter other life necessities so in other words survival of the fetus some individuals better suited for the environment so there are some organisms that they really need to compete for their survival. Otherwise, they will die. Okay, now we have to move on to the descent. Descent with modification. Each living organism has descended with changes from other species over time. So common descent were derived from common ancestors. Okay. Class, try to look at the descent, no, how it changes over time. So if you try to look at this figure, anyway, it is labeled as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, and so on, if there is no one. Anyway, it's an up only up to letter N. Now, try to look at and compare the differences. So this is how you are going to modify the difference, the differences, no? Their differences, their changes over time. So try to look at the eyes, the shape of the eyes, the shape of the nose, the shape of the head, since this is the skull, okay? There is really changes over time. Look at the nose. Okay. The mandible. Okay. So this will serve as your guide, no? If you want to compare the species over time then this is their changes okay now we have to move on and to the evidence of evolution so what are those evidences of evolution one we have the fossils record second we have the geographic distribution of living things the third one we have the homologous body structures and the similarities in early development of organisms. Class, what do you mean by fossils? Fossils are the remains of dead plants and animals of long ago. They provide a concrete evidence of what extinct organisms look like and how they live. So the most familiar and tangible fossils remain are hard resistant structures such as uh, the teeth, the shells, and of course bones. A fossils could be also be preserved as footprints, cast, or mold. Since organic matter decay over a period of time. It would be difficult to find a preservation of the entire body of the organism. So at least a portion of that then that can be that can serve as a evidence, okay? So these fossil records reveal a lot about the organism and condition of the prehistoric past. So Darwin 
collected the preserved remains of ancient organisms because this will serve as evidence for evolution. Then, some of those fossils resembled organisms that were still alive today. Okay. So, look at this. Just have a quick look on this slide. Okay, another evidence. We have the vestigial organs. So, this organ served no useful function in an organism. Example of this, we have the appendix, miniature legs, and arms. Now, try to look at these similarities in early development of the embryo. Or, this is an illustration of comparative embryology. So, simply describe, no? Or, you can simply compare the similarities when they are still in their early development. This is the first one is for the fish, then the second one is for the reptile, then for the bird and human. So have a look on this. They are similar, right? Yes, they are really similar at the early stage, embryologic stage. The fish, the reptile, the bird, and human. Okay. So this is now the summary of Darwin's theory. Individuals in nature differ from one another. Organisms in nature produce more offspring than can survive. And many of those who do not survive do not reproduce, of course. How can they reproduce where, in fact, they do not survive? So, because more organisms are produced than can survive, so its species must struggle for resources. Yes. Each organism is unique. Each has advantages and disadvantages in the struggle for existence. Right. That is really true. So class, I hope it is very clear about the theory of evolution by Darwin. And of course, uh, together with Alfred Wallace. Now, species alive today descended with modification from species that lived in the past. All organisms on Earth are united into a single family tree of life by common descent. Now, we have to talk on the evolutionary relationship. When we say phylogenetics, it is a study of determining evolutionary relationship or patterns of descent of organism. All of the species of organisms that are alive today have descended from ancestral species. Okay? So, scientists can build trees to show the evolutionary relationships of species as a representation of classifying organism based on evolutionary relationship. Just like you can build a family tree to show the relationship of your ancestor and their descendants. So by making that family tree, it is easy for us to trace what family you came from up to the present okay now as shown in the figure below common ancestry refer refers to the fact that distinct descendants lineages have the same ancestral lineage and common with one another okay so this is how it is being done so for the lion it starts with the lion then after a long time, what happened? Lion, leopard, then leopard, the jaguar, then jaguar, it turns to tiger, then tiger, to domestics, then we have the cat, in which we are very much known. So, the same species, but then how 
they look like after such long period of time. So you have here, no, their branches. Their region is the lion. Okay. So this type of evidence for evolution is the presence of structures in organisms that share the same basic form. For example, the bones in the appendages of human, dog, dolphin, and bat all share the same overall construction. Okay, we will try to look at the figure later. So resulting forms and functions, they are now called homologous structure, means unrelated animals have organs with similar function, yet are very different in structure and form. Okay, so now we have here the figure for comparison also, or for you to be guided how they are similar. So this is the similar construction of this appendages that indicates that these organisms share a common ancestor. So parang parehas tayo ng pinanggalingan or not parehas but common ancestor. So this is the structure of homologous. No? Similar organs shared among organisms of different taxonomy that suggest a common ancestor. So if you try to look at this one, so this is the part of the, or the shoulder. Look, they almost have similar structure. The humerus, the radius, this is for the human. And you have the ulna, the carpals, metacarpals, and the phalanges. And try to look at also for the dog. You almost have the same structure. Okay, and so with the dolphins. So dolphins also have their, their uh, let's take a look at the carpals. They also have their metacarpals and also the fruit bud. Okay, <clears throat> the fruit bud. Okay, so are you done? Now let's move on to the next slide. This is for analogous. When you say analogous, have structurally different but functionally the same as birds, but and insects. So bird has wing and butterfly wing. This butterfly also has wing okay so analogous have structurally different but functionally the same so birds can fly bats can fly and insects have wings okay now modern classification is based on evolutionary relationship called systematics and cladistic so when we say cladistic is a classification based on common ancestry when we say phylogeny is the evolutionary history for a group of species evidence from species the fossil record and molecular data with branching tree diagrams so that is the difference between cladistic and phylogeny. A cladogram is a diagram that also describes evolutionary relationships among groups. So it is based on phylogeny, which is the study of evolutionary relationships. So sometimes a phylogenetic tree is also called cladogram. Though there are minor differences between the two, but biologists would group organisms based on their physical appearance. Okay. 
So this is how they are being classified. So dinosaurs and the birds. Then you have the crocodile. Mm -hmm. Then the rat, rodents, preorbital penestra, then the rodents, the primates, the hare, the amphibians, the raffin fish, the shark. So, preorbital penestra, an example for this with the crocodile, dinosaurs, bird. Amniotic egg with hair, the primates. Yes. We belong to here. We also have hair. For the four limbs, then you have amphibians. Amphibians have four limbs. For the bony skeleton, then we have the ray fin fish. Yes. Fish has a bony skeleton. And for the vertebrae, then we have the shark. That is an example. And there are a lot more. So class, to wrap up our discussion for today about evolution, the, it says that evolution is a continuing to change the heritable characteristic of different species over successive generation. So scientific evidence for the descent of today's species from a common ancestor through the fossils record. Homologists analogies, vestigial structures, molecular uniformity and diversity, and biogeography. Then evolution occurs when evolutionary processes such as genetic drift and natural, natural selection resulting in certain characteristics becoming more common within a population. So changes in heritable behavioral or physical traits are through the process by which organism change over time. So this is the adaptive traits that pass on from parents to their offspring during reproduction. reproduction. So evolution does not change in a single individual, but instead it changes the inherited means of growth and development of individuals of the same species living. So the offspring inherit those genetic characteristics, their chances of survival. The ability to give birth may vary until the environment changes. Okay. So in early ancestor populations, human evolution advocated new abilities to adapt to environmental change and so altered the human way of life. Organism must have to adapt for survival reason. Okay, so we are almost to finish. This is the last slide of our topic. So class, I hope you have gained knowledge and information. And this is a way helpful in believing that there is really evolution and all life forms on earth so through the presentation of the different theories and evidences then the word is the world is a diverse is diverse and really complex so we need to explore more so again thank you and god bless us all Stay safe and see you next meeting.